Welcome to Unity Spiritual Center of Panama City and a shout out to our online community that I am learning more about as time progresses. So welcome and I'm grateful that you're joining us online today or whenever it is you watch. So this morning we embark on a 12 week journey. I'm excited. Our 12 powers. These are our gifts of God. We have many gifts of God, but these are identifiable and can be learned and grown into. And we're going to explore each and every one. So today we start this series called Our 12 Powers. And the foundational principles from which this comes is the Charles Fillmore book, and Charles Fillmore is a co-founder co of Unity, that's right. And he wrote the book, 12 Powers of Man, in 1930. Now, ladies, we know that he meant mankind, and it just was too long to be put on the cover. But we know the truth. So over the past hundred years, when Charles was formulating this work, in his own mind, and he was discussing it with Myrtle, the other co-founder of Unity, very good. Countless hours over those past hundred years have been put into this study. And I have heard some people say, who have been studying these truths for 30, 40, 50 years, obviously the, the mentors that I've had in my Unity career, I have heard them say that they could study the 12 powers every single day of their life for 50 years and still have more to learn. That's how rich this material is. We won't be going quite that deep during our next 12 weeks, but I will expose you to these truths, to this operating system that is already within you. So we will be focusing on each of the 12, one at a time. However, it's critical to know that nothing is an island. Just because we will be studying and exploring one of the 12, they all work together in an integral way. Nothing is untouched by every other thing in the universe. And that includes this study. So we're just going to separate it out a little bit because our brain likes to, to learn one little itty bitty pit at a time. And then we can connect it to the next dot. So we will be focusing on each one independently. And that includes the body center. As you can see on the slide, there are these little stars and there is a body center, an energy center that is associated with each and every one of the 12 powers. It's typically a gland and you'll learn about those as we move on. Also, we will be talking about the color that is represented by each and every one of the 12 powers because it will help you in your time of working with these 12 powers to visualize yourself surrounded by that power. So there's so much more to this that we're not going to touch on, that we may touch on on our Wednesday evenings. Um, so I invite you to participate in those. Regarding our 12 powers, we are constantly expressing from all 12 of them. However, <laughs> we don't always express for them in a healthy and balanced way. We could be over or under expressing any one of the 12 powers. And so it is our challenge and opportunity to identify if we're over expressing or under expressing. Because the answer is yes, yes, and yes. And you all know what I mean. So that said, our intention is to learn and understand 
What is it to express each power in a healthy and balanced way? What is it to express it when it's an overdeveloped power and we're over the top with the expression of it? And what is it when we are under developing that power or under utilizing it and what does that look like? Because our behavior is our biggest clue to where our mind is. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that, but it's true. So as we study, we're only going to use one at a time. And we'll weave them together and integrate them as we move forward. Because we like to utilize our brain in its preferred method of learning. So it works best. However, don't be fooled. They're all connected. So when we talk about faith, we need to also realize that it does not work independently from love and understanding and will and zeal and release, renunciation. And at the end of this series, we will have a solid understanding of what these 12 powers are. It's not complicated by any stretch of the imagination, not the parts that we're going to be going over in Sunday and Wednesday sessions. But the trick, there's always a trick, or what we perceive to be the trick, and that is our attention is key. Have you found that in other areas of your life? It all comes back to, where did the mind go? Oh, there he is, bunny, squirrel, off, you know. So, attention. So these gifts of God, as they are sometimes called, are the standard operating system. In your computers, in your cell phones, in your iPads, you have a standard operating system. You, as a spiritual being, having a, unit, a human experience, have this in your hard drive. Whether or not you're using it is another, another choice. But you came fully equipped. This is the part where you can say amen if you so choose. <laughs> All right, good. Just making sure you're with me. So it's like buying a new car. It automatically comes with an engine and a door and the wheels and a windshield and more. You get to choose whether or not you drive the car out of the driveway. You get to choose whether or not you use the door or climb in and out the window. You get to choose to use the lights, the windshield wiper, and the turn signals. Those are choices. We all know that those are choices from our other driver friends out on the road, right? Okay. So regardless of your personal choice and your fellow drivers, the basic equipment is there. Your vehicle could look like this shiny new red car. Or it could look like this. It's got nothing to do with age and has everything to do with our choices and consciousness. I won't ask if your car looks like that. Either way, it has the same equipment, an engine, a door, wheels, a windshield, turn signals. <sighs> operating equipment, standard operating equipment. It's all there. It's in the package. Aren't we blessed? So right now, in this now moment, I invite you to take a look at your life, it won't take long, and identify what is the area that I could use a little work on. The something that we're gonna apply all of these 12 powers to. We all have something. We can't run from that something. We've tried, but it doesn't work. It follows us along. So take a look, identify right now what it is you want to work on through these 12 powers. It could be your health. It could be your finances. It could be time management. I don't know, but you do. You, you know you do. So just hold on to it. And we will mindfully balance all of the 12 powers in relation to what is ours to work on. Sound like a plan? Yeah. All right.
let's get busy. Well, you can do that. You can work on yourself through this time together, or you can just sit there and listen and say, you know, that was a very lovely talk, dear. I don't have a single thing understanding of what it is you're talking about, but your enthusiasm is very cute. You guys laugh, but I've been told that before. Well, that's why I remember it so well. So we laugh out loud when we put a resistance to doing our work. Who here has put up resistance to doing your work? I know. I knew I was not alone. So let's begin. Let's begin with faith because it will help us through all the others. Let's begin with faith. Faith is the ability to believe, to intuit, and to perceive, to hear your internal guidance, and to have a conviction to know. Have that deep knowing within your gut that you know. By golly, you know that you know, and nothing is going to tell you otherwise. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. So you know what it is. How would you like to have that level of clarity all the time? All right. The metaphysical meaning of faith is the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. It's the uh, spiritual assurance, the power to do the seeming impossible thing. It happens all the time because individuals have utilized the power, the ability of their faith to do the impossible. We hear about it in the news. It's in the paper. It's on YouTube. Faith is that inner knowing. That what we seek in our life experience is out there seeking us. It is knowing that when we stand firm in our purpose and our passion, the universe will open wide to say, you over there, that's your spot. And you automatically say, yes. And you know that you know, and you say yes again. Has that happened in your lifetime? I see a lot of nodding heads. So you know what it is that I talk about. Now in Hebrews, in our Christian Bible, is also shared the meaning of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So we've been working on this faith thing for quite a while. If it's in the Old Testament. So we're not alone in our striving to know faith in a greater way. Faith is our ability to believe in the unseen. As we work with our unity principle number three, as you can see now that they're up on the wall, human beings create their experiences by the activity of their thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning in thought. We know our thoughts and beliefs influence all of our experience, our internal experience, as well as our outer experience. So ask yourself and be totally honest, because it doesn't matter to me. Do you believe in the 
information and the statement that is unity principles number three. You don't have to tell me there will be no showing of hands. I'm asking you so you know for yourself. Does your thinking affect your life? Have you witnessed it? Have you ever thought and thought and thought and thought and worried and worried and worried and worried and then, oh my God, it, there it is in front of you, alive, with teeth? Yeah, that's the activity of our thought. And yet, have you not thought and thought and thought and thought and prayed and prayed and prayed and showed gratitude and love and peace and joy and harmony and then, poof, <gasps> dang, I wish that was happening every day. Yes, our activity of our thought is powerful. That's why they call it the law of mind action. Law is law is law, period. It works the same for everyone. So during our meditation time, surround yourself with the royal blue color. That is the color associated with faith. The location of the gland is in the middle of your brain, in the middle of your cerebrum. It is called the pineal gland because it looks like a pine cone. You can just visualize a pine cone in the middle of your head. Make it blue. That area produces melatonin, a serotonin-derived hormone that modulates your sleep patterns. Don't you sleep much more soundly when your faith is strong and intact and healthy and balanced? Are you not getting your rest? It's all connected. And so what we want to do is take that area of our brain, which is our hardwiring, and program it. Program it by yourself. Not the programming from your parents and your previous religion and your Sunday school teacher and your principal from third grade. None of that. You want to program it yourself. Your mind is open and receptive. Your heart is open and receptive due to prayer, meditation, focusing on truth. Think of it as puppy training. We have a one-year-old in my household, a very active one-year-old at that. And when you're in puppy training, which lasts till three years old, you know, they want to do what, what it is to please you, to be praised, to be supported, to be loved, to be scratched in the back of the ear. So if we treat our minds in the same way, that area that was programmed by someone else that we're cleaning out those tapes and reprogramming for ourselves, we want to train it to know we are a child of God. We have these 12 powers within us. It's our standard operating system. So we want to program our mind to know and have faith in a higher power, whatever your understanding of the higher power is today, because it'll be different a year from now and five years from now. Trust me, <laughs> I've been on this journey. It evolves and it's supposed to. So we want to have faith that we are created in the image and likeness of the higher power, the divine presence. It says so in Genesis. We've talked about this before. Everything that was created was created and it was called good. Not bad, not sinful, not wicked. It was called by our creator good. Repeat with me, called good. good, got it. So I want you to have faith in your innate goodness. We don't always behave from that place, but it's in there. You all know it is. 
So if we don't program this area, this faith center in our own mind, somebody else will. Somebody else already has, which is why we have all the problems we do now. <laughs> We're cleaning out and reprogramming. In this level of consciousness, we want to feel connected. That's what we're striving for. When we enter into what Jesus called the kingdom of heaven, we enter into a spiritual consciousness that the Buddha called awake. The kingdom of heaven and awake are the same. It is that centered place, that peaceful place that we can go and be where we know everything is good. In the Eastern teachings, you have the crown chakra depicted by the thousand-petaled lotus. We've all seen the images. This is to indicate your highest power center so that we know we are children of the Most High. That is our possibility and potentiality every waking second. When we are one with that creative universe, with that creative life force, life is good. We feel connected, our mind is clear, we're thinking, we're creative. And when we're not connected, the alternative to being out of alignment with that level of consciousness is like being in a fog. I've experienced fog here since I've been here. Whoa. We don't have a fog like that out in the Southwest. No, I haven't experienced fog like that in a long time. Your thinking is fuzzy. You can't see anything. It's just all gray. It's like you begin to, to know where you end and where the next thing stops. It's all, I don't even have words for it. But you know what it is that I talk about. Being disconnected and in a thick fog in your mind, in your heart, in your energy. And so balanced faith is when we express our thoughts and actions and work towards being the best us that we can be. Be all that you can be. It's a great slogan, actually. When we put our conviction and base it in unity principle, universal principle, universal laws and truth with a capital T, because truth is truth is truth. When we put ourselves in that place, we are centered with the divine. We are standing in our power, in our higher power. That's balanced and healthy faith. An overdeveloped faith outpictures itself as dogmatic and narrow minded, very black and white thinking, often very highly opinionated. And this individual, when they're expressing from this place, their mind is made up. There is nothing that will change their mind no science, no technology, no compromise with your spouse. It's solid. It's done. Their convictions are based in ego personality, not universal law. That's overdeveloped faith. Underdeveloped faith outpictures itself as distrust or skepticism, uh, a level of hopelessness. This is what I call faith being applied in the wrong direction. It's just a downward spiral as opposed to 
an equal exchange of energy with the universe. This is where there is more of a belief in failure and struggle and lack than could possibly be. And so I know for myself and my life experience, I've been balanced and I've been overdeveloped and I've been underdeveloped in my expression of faith. And I bet you can probably see all three of those levels of faith in your life as well. Sobering, isn't it? We're all striving to be the best that we can be. So the question for each of us becomes, how am I right now in this time in my life using this gift from God, using our innate ability of faith? Am I aware of what it's doing? Behavior is communication, it will tell you. Pay attention to what is happening in your daily activities. Awareness is key. Watch your thinking and the language that you use those judgmental comments that slip out about yourself and others. That will provide insight into where your thoughts are. And so whether faith is balanced or overdeveloped or underdeveloped, each of us has the tools of affirmations and denials. We can recenter ourselves. We can come together in community. We can ask for support from the chaplains or from the minister, from one another, from our spiritual family and friends to say, hey, my faith is a little kiltered. <laughs> I could use someone to help me set my faith back on track. That's all it takes. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. And in a spiritual community filled with like minds and loving people, ask and you shall receive. Remember, your 12 powers are your standard operating system. You came complete with the package. Let, let's all hit the on button, the balanced button. Oh, it probably has one of those slider things. What are those buttons called? Faders. It's got a fader button. Yeah, yeah. Reprogram your hard drive. When was the last time you defragged your brain? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Watching the little screen with all the little colors all move around. Defrag the brain. That's your assignment this week. Go home, defrag, for how long, however long it takes. <laughs> Thank you for asking. The beautiful thing about our unity philosophy is that the core of its teachings is a belief, not a hope, not a prayer. It's a belief that we have the ability to change our life by changing our minds and changing our attitudes and changing our actions. I have that power for me and you have that power for you. I can't do it for you and you can't do it for me, but I can support you and you can support me, but I can't do it for you. And you know what? I won't do it for you because I have enough going on right here. <laughs> so ask yourself. Be mindful. Are you putting your faith in God? Are you putting your faith in the universe? Does the universe have your back in all your activities? Are you putting your faith in lack, in fear, in dis-ease.
with every thought you choose. Pay attention to where it is you are putting your faith. These 12 powers are interconnected. It affects everything else. Your thoughts create your life. Choose wisely. And I look forward to Wednesday evening, if you so choose, to join me where we will explore a little bit more about faith, how it shows up in our lives, and have a more personal and in-depth discussion about it. Many blessings. Namaste.